Alright, we're going to be watching Meme Lord, who's going to be playing uh, Brigida and Anna on Gibraltar. This is the new Gibraltar map. I actually haven't seen this one before. And this is Silver. I think it's in console would be my guess. Um, but let me, let me read you what you said. Uh, how to deal with unwinnable games in metal ranks. Hi, I'm mostly playing support, and I'm by no means a great player, but hopefully a decent one. I'm stuck in silver, unable to put together a consistent number of wins to rank up, with the main reason being, as I think, absolutely unwinnable games, where due to matchmaking, it just happens that there is no chance to make a difference. I understand that it can happen sometimes, but it really happens like 50% of the time for me, resulting in 5-4, 5-5, or worse streaks which do not rank me up. I'm also sticking to the mentality that I can't influence my teammates' mistakes, but I can do something about my own, which is good. I'm trying to look at myself first and improve, but sometimes it's just so difficult to not acknowledge that my team has no chance that I can do nothing about it, even at my best. I also assume that it's not necessary to play completely without errors to rank up in silver. Anyways, I'm sharing a replay code of a typical game as an example of what I'm talking about. I would appreciate it if you shared your thoughts on two things. One, what I could have done better. Two, do you think the things I can improve on would really change the course of this game? Could I theoretically do something about the result here? All right, so I've already pre-watched uh, this game, um, mostly the defense, because on offense, I think your team just slash you such so stop trying completely. So there's no point in us reviewing the, the, the offense side, um, which is silly because tons of times people actually turn around and, and you know, you get rolled one way, you roll in the other, and then you win. So uh, talking about a few points, first of all, do you need to not make mistakes in silver in order to climb out? The short answer actually is yes, weirdly enough. Um, you might think, oh, like only GM players don't make mistakes. That's that's not true, right? First of all, even in GM, people make mistakes. But the types of mistakes they make are different, right? And that's what's really important. To get out of silver to gold, you need to stop not making all mistakes. You need to stop making silver level mistakes, if that makes sense, right? No one expects you to play like a GM to get out of silver, but people expect you to play like a gold to get out of silver. I think that, that intuitively follows, right? No one expects you to be the best player in the world to get out of silver, but you simply need to be better than the other silver players, and that's kind of your issue. Right? I do think that, generally speaking, you are better than the other people in this game, but not by a lot. And thus, you probably need to play a ton of games to actually eventually get out. You could probably get to, let's say, low gold or something, um, even without like much improvement, but you have to play a lot of games because you're just not consistently playing well enough um, relative to the other people in the game. Um, that is a number, number one, right? Number two is... It's very rare to run into unwinnable games. I think it's extremely rare. Um, I think that, you know, if you were good enough, you can swing, you can win 85 to 90% of your games quite quite easily. I think that even, you know, assume you're not one of the best, you know, supports in the world or anything like that, I still think you can easily win 70% plus of your games without a problem. I do think you're going to run into some things where, like, hey, in some games, things are going to be kind of weird and tricky. So, for example, in this game, looking at the start here, uh, I think your Moira is still coming on your spawn, and your Risa is still coming out of spawn, despite the fact that there's only two seconds left on the clock. That is unusual. At higher ranks, that will never happen. However, I would like to know, and the other team, they also have a hero, a player who hasn't picked. They just have the advantage of being on offense, so their spawn is much, much closer. But that's going to mess up the first fight. Regardless, that's only one fight out of 15 to 20 in a game, you know? Like, yes, maybe you lose this first fight because, like, your team isn't in position, but... But there are plenty of other fights that you can swing and influence, and also you're going to benefit from that, from that sometimes too when you're playing on the opposite side and they don't end up picking and they're out of position, etc., etc. Regardless, um, what could you have done better? How this has actually influenced the game? I break down the game in terms of a series of fights, right? If you win team fights, right, you win more team fights than the other the opposing team, you probably will win games. It's not quite that simple, right? I have a plus minus plus minus one system that I do uh, to talk people through, like, do you deserve to win a game or not? And, you know, you can review that at some point if you want to. But in generally speaking, try to win every team fight that you can, right? Or try to win as many team fights as you can over the course of the game, right? If you can influence more fights, then you will win more games. It's really that simple, right? You win more fights, you win more games, because games are divided up into team fights. So let's start watching your play and see what I'm talking about. So we're going to start right here. Again, uh, a note, this is not a great place to set up. Uh, you really should be high ground, but your team isn't here too, so everything is kind of weird because this is like a bizarre silver level game. Because notice it's only like you three are out here right now, which is really, really, really weird. <laughs> but fine. You want to stay here. It's not, it's, not like a, it's not like an error per se, but I would say it's not like necessarily helping the situation because it's just so unusual. So Cassidy's going to drop down, fall on top of you. You just don't notice him at all, right? Again, notice that he gets super low here, and you're just not healing him. Right? This is really bad. 
So you should have heard, first of all, you would see that he was high ground, right, from right here. You can see above that he's on high ground. He's going to take the injury. You would have heard him get hit. Hopefully you're wearing a headset. You would hear him get hit on your left, and then you should have turned and looked, and he's going to drop into you, and you see how you're still not looking at him, and you have three packs right now. Right? You could easily heal him. You see how you're still not healing, still not healing, still not healing, still not healing, and finally you heal. So let's count how long it is b before he gets healed. Okay, so right here he takes damage. Let's let's. You should already have healed him right here because you should have been looking. Right, you have nothing else to do. You know what I mean? Like there's nobody in your face. You can see the Torb. I would be like looking like this and like you know kind of step back a little bit so I can see the the Torb and the Cassidy. But fine, let's not worry about that. Let's count from the moment he drops. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Six, right now, you haven't even healed him. This is just Inspire, by the way. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Wait, did you actually heal him? Oh, you did, you did, finally, you did finally heal him. My bad, my bad. Okay, okay. So, so that wasn't even Inspire. Yeah, Inspire is another problem we're going to talk about in a second. All right, so let's, let's count again. So again, dropping one, two, three, four, five, six, right? Almost seven seconds before you heal the Cassidy. I will tell you that that... That is going to be fight losing at higher ranks. <laughs> to not heal your DPS for seven seconds after they've already returned to you is not good. And it's a very easy thing for you to correct, right? You just need to have better awareness in terms of the people that are in front of you, right? When you came out from spawn, you'd be like, okay, look, who's here? Okay, two people are still way behind me. All right, fine. But I have two DPS here. I'm going to stand in such, such a spot that I can see both of them. Cassidy gets hurt. Immediately heal him. Right? Cassidy not being able to shoot at the shield for seven seconds means that this shield would already have broken by now, which prevents the Rhine from pushing. Right? Little things snowball into becoming much bigger problems for your team. And then you're like, oh, what do I do now? Like, the fight's over. Well, you, you're supposed to do things earlier. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, how do I get out of credit card debt when I'm $100,000 in debt? Well, at this point, you know, maybe it's too late, right? And you declare bankruptcy because, like, what are you going to do at this point? It's the little mistakes you made along the way that accumulate that prevent you from being able to win games. So again, healing for Cassidy, big, big deal. So also note here, your whip shot accuracy is really bad. So having good Inspire uptime is really, really, really important, right? I'd say for the critical moments when a fight is really seriously engaged, you want to have Inspire up 90% plus of the time. It's a huge part of your healing. But let's watch your whip shots here, okay? So first whip shot, you miss. First of all, it wasn't even on target, even the shield wasn't there. But second, it hits the shield, okay? So you need to be aware, look, if I can't land the whip shot, I don't want to throw it because the damage it does is insignificant to a Rhine shield, and I need Inspire to be up in order to give my team sustain. So when Rhines come out, the first thing they typically do is they put shield up, so you don't want a whip shot. You want to wait till the Rhine is swinging or doing fire strike, something that's predictable that you can whip shot then to then trigger Inspire. So that's already mistake number one from whip shot. Right? So now we're going to wait. Here comes your second whip shot. Right? You're waiting, which is good, but right? he's got a shield. Like you're, you're kind of waiting. You should really be healing your your Torb, I guess he doesn't really, oh, you're looking to the Cassidy, yep. So you're looking right now. So there, whip shot number two. This is just a straight miss, okay? So now you're 0 for 2. This is really bad. <laughs> I think missing two whip shots in a row will almost never happen at, at even, like, let's say, platinum level uh, play, right? Obviously, it's still two whole tiers above you, but I'm just clarifying that, like, you need to land whip shots really consistently if you're going to play Brig or otherwise you're going to throw games. Right? It's a critical part of a kit. You cannot be missing whip shots on tanks. It's really, really bad. Like squishy is fine, whatever, right? But missing on tanks is is like not a thing that that can happen. So Ryan's gonna charge in right now. Remember that you already wasted whip shot, which is a, a key moment because whip shot can be used to reposition enemies, which is really good to save your teammates. You throw the pack on your your torp. You're walking forwards right now, which I think is kind of dangerous. But I would keep an eye on the torp, right? I wouldn't walk forward right now, because what am I going to do? I, I'm walking to the Rhine, the Rhine will just kill me. Just stay back here, pack him, and then at this moment in time, whip shot the Rhine to knock him back, and bam, you saved your Torp, your, your, your tor, right? Instead, you see how you stop looking at the Torp, right? You do pack number one, okay, fine. I, I would not be playing here, right? Again, I'd be playing slightly further back, but I would just be looking at the Torp. Great. Now, I pack him again, right? After this swing right here, I pack him again, because now he's getting low again. I pack him again, and I get ready for whip shot. Instead... You see how you're still not looking at the Torp? Okay, now you're looking at the Torp again. Now, you're not going to get the pack in on time, and you haven't whip shot of the Rhine. If you whip shot the Rhine, he goes back, and he just can't kill the Torp. <laughs> right? Like, literally, one whip shot here saves your Torp. And you, now you do it too late, you also don't pack your, you don't whip shot the Rhine, and you don't pack your Torp in time. And as a result, your Torp dies. Now, one thing to note, again, I, I assume you don't have too much overx experience, just based on a lot of contextual factors, but... 
in Overwatch, once your team, once a team loses one person, the odds of you winning the fight go from 50-50, roughly 50-50, depending on defender's advantage, go from 50-50 to like like 30-70, right? Like literally your chance of winning goes from like 50% to like 30% the moment you lose one person. And if you lose a second person, the odds of you winning the fight are like 10% or less, right? It's like tiny. So as a job as a support is that you need, it's a little complicated, but like generally speaking, you need to keep everybody alive. Right? That's typically the way support kits are built, is that you're really, really good at saving your teammates and covering up for their mistakes. It is a mistake for the Torb to be out there, it's a mistake for the Torb not to be able to get away from the Rhine, etc, etc. But your job is to save them, and you could have saved him multiple different ways, right? You could have helped Cassidy enough that he broke the shield to prevent the Rhine from walking forward, you could have healed the Torb up, or you could have whipshotted the Rhine, right? Or even just had Inspire up to heal the Torb enough that maybe he doesn't die to this, even without the packs. So that's like, what, four different ways you could have sort of saved the Torb, and you did none of them, right? So you're just not executing as support, which is why this is not going well for you. Now that your Torb is dead, they have a ton of pressure, right? Now it's going to be a five on four, right? And they're walking into you, your resource is already purple, and now you're in trouble. So you really need to land Whipshot here. Yep, you got, you got the Inspire. Now, you see the Ash is grossly out of position, <laughs> right? She clearly, I don't know, she meant to do this. She probably didn't mean to do this, right? She walks up, right? And then she's going to Coach Gun herself into your backline. This is the moment where you can make a play, right? You don't have any more packs, so there's no point looking at the Arisa. Like, you can't help the Arisa anymore. Kill the kill the Ash, right? One, two, three swings, right? One swing, two swing, three swing, bash, whip shot, instant death, okay? It'll take you, I think, 1.8 seconds, two seconds, give or take, right? It's about, about two seconds, you could kill this Ash. So you personally could get a pick right now, right? You're not going to have whip shot, but you could personally get the pick on the Ash right now you've been dealing damage, right? At the minimum, taking pressure away from your Orisa. But like I said, at this point, with your Torb already dead, the odds of you winning this fight are like very little. All right, so we reset. Ryan's still following you. You bash to get out of the way. Okay, fine. All right, yep, you farm Inspire. So Ryan's charging in, you step back. So you can come out. So critical moment, like, you know, we're, we're all coming out here. Your Orisa's made some space. You're gonna walk forwards. You, you miss another whip shot again. Like try to time it for when he's like swinging. You kind of do, but you do you do it at the end of the swing, which is why he starts blocking. You try to do it at the beginning of the swing. So you throw pack to your Moira. Sorry, to your Risa. Your Moira's low right now. You should pack your Moira. So you notice how you're not packing your Moira, and then she just dies. So watch. All right. Again, Moira's injured right now. Okay, she's already injured, but now she's super injured because she has to get fire strike. Okay, one, two. Three, four seconds go by with your Moira on your screen and you're not healing her. This can't happen. <laughs> you know, like, I don't know, you can't be blaming your teammates for this. Like, they're sta she's standing in front of you. Now, granted, like, she's out of position. There's no reason for her to be this far forward. But, like, you can save her. You know what I mean? Like, you give her a pack, then you have Whipshot coming up in, like, a quarter second. You Whipshot the, the Rhino away and then your Moira lives. And if your Moira lives, maybe you win this fight. But without the Moira, you're for sure not going to win this fight because now there's not enough healing. Right? Especially now that you have no packs. See? Like, at this point, like, what are you going to do? Nothing. Like, the thing is, the moment for you to have influenced the fight is gone. Because you already made that mistake. Again, you dodge Shatter. I don't know if that was intentional or not, but, you know, sure. But at this point, you know, this fight's kind of over. And then you're going to make a big mistake here, which is you pop Rally. So, you popped Ultimate here in a 5-on-3 situation. Alright? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So let's, let's, let's pause for a moment and think. Ultimate should only be used to win fights. Can you win this fight as Brick? No, right? There's, there's no way. There's like literally no way. I don't care if you're the number one Brick in the world. Like if you were an owl Brick, there's it mathematically impossible for you to win this fight right now. Like there's just no chance in this situation that you can win a five on three. It, there's there's no point. This is a completely wasted ultimate, right? Uh, and hopefully you understand, like you can see the situation. I mean, like again, I don't know how much experience you have, but like hopefully you can read the situation and understand. There's no way that you can win this fight. Like you're gonna pop rally and you're just gonna run around the open for a while because you can't one v one the ride even with rally, right? You go over here. There's gonna be four people that are gonna kill you like instantly, even with your shield. So you're gonna pop rally here. You see how you just you just stand here like wait, like you see nothing is happening from this, and you've completely wasted the rally. This is on you. This is not your team, right? Your team didn't force you to use a bad rally. <laughs> this is on you. All right, you're going to switch to Ana here, and you're going to come out. So, I, in general, I would say your Ana play is a little better than your Brig play. So, you're going to uh, nade the Rhine here. I don't really like this, like, naked nade. Like, there's no... 
there's no synergy here, right? Even if you need the ride here, like, what's the point? Like, no one's going to be able to kill him because you just put shield up and walk away. You want to look for better opportunities to throw a grade, and they're just going to spam the ability. That's number one. Number two, he starts to charge. The moment he starts to charge, you should already be doing sleep right now and step into the line of path, right? So in his charge radius, so you know his charge is coming straight because you saw him before you teched around the corner. After you throw a nade, you hear charge, pop sleep, will step out, sleep dart him, because sleep dart has a delay before it goes off. Instead, you let him get in way too far, and now you sleep him. And now you have the problem that now you have a nail right in your back line. Next problem is you shoot him, which you probably shouldn't do, right? Because the whole point was to sleep him. Right, he gets slipped right now. No one actually hits him, right? Like your pharaoh is using concussive. It technically does like a small amount of damage, but I don't know that the pharaoh triggered it. But you definitely triggered it by sleep by by shooting him. So I don't really understand what's the point of sleeping him if you're just gonna shoot him right away, anyway. You know what I mean? And now you're stuck with a nailed rhyme in your back line with no sleep and no grenade. So now you need to run, which is the correct call. So you also make a mistake here, right? You go wide of the corner instead of going tight to the corner, right? Think about it, it's just faster. If, you're ch if Ryan is chasing you, you want to maximize your speed as much as possible, right? Play tight to the corner like this. Don't take wide swings of the corner because that slows you down, and which is very important now because you're super close to the Ryan hitbox. So he's chasing, you hit your fire strike, you're fine, okay? So you should not have turned to look at him at all, all right? Because turning and walking backwards reduces your speed by 10%. Just just run, man. Just 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 run like this and stay close to the corner and just keep running like this until you hear him stop chasing you. But because you turn and you went wide of the corner, you've gotten just enough, uh, you've lost just enough space that he's able to catch up to you and hit you with that hammer swing, right? Again, a quarter second of better movement or not have turning around would mean that you would have been outside of the range of this hammer swing and he would never have caught up to you. Because heroes have the exact same movement speed, excluding Genji and Tracer. Um, so you never, he never would have been a catcher to you. You could just circle this this block like infinitely, right? Around a quarter, like over and over and over again. He never would have caught up to you. So again, this death is on you, right? Like there's no reason for you to die here. All you had to do was just run and you're good, right? And the Ryan's gonna hopefully die for this, almost die for this. So again, another death that's on you, right? Like it's nothing to do with your team. And your team actually manages to... to hold it anyway, which is great. So, playing here, right, you're looking for the sojourn, great, get the heal off. So you see the Pharaoh is low right now, you heal, right, great, good. Risa does an ulti, which is unfortunately wasted. So, one thing to note here is you're having a lot of trouble with the uh, line of sight, because as soon as the Orisa goes down here, you're gonna kind of like lose LOS because of a combination of the shuttle and the fact that the ground slopes downwards. So this is really bad because your job is definitely to keep everyone alive. Adam, your more is uh, responding, come back, respond. So you really need to see the, the Orisa right now. So at this moment when she slept, I would probably instinctively start walking forwards like this to be able to get an angle to see her, even knowing that Shatter, etc. is coming. Alternatively, you could have gone left and played up here, right? Alternatively, when you respawn, you should come up and play it up here, which would have been great, right? Ultimately, this is the best spot for you to have been in, right? This is the strongest spot for Ana in this point, most likely, and you should have been playing there instead of on the ground, especially against the Rhine. So there are many ways that you could have been in a position to already be healing your, your Orisa right now, but unfortunately, you were not because you weren't in the right position. Shatter goes off. Now things have gone really poorly. So the moment the Shatter goes off, uh, you should have been sleeping right now, right? This should be asleep, followed by a grenade, followed by keep your Risa alive, right? And Risa, because Risa's the frontmost person, you don't sleep or grenade, and you don't heal the two DPS who are sleeping or stunned in front of you, right? And on Fares on fire, too. And Dragon comes through and kills them. But you could have easily healed them up. At a minimum, the DPS, if not the Orisa here, you could have easily healed and saved the DPS here, and then maybe they turn it around. But you just kind of sit here and do nothing, right? Like, let's watch the gameplay from this moment in time. What are you doing right now? Nothing, nothing, nothing. Nothing. Like, you're even looking at your DPS. You know what I mean? Like, you literally look at them. You put your crosshair on them. See? Like, you're looking at your Pharaoh right now. You have grenade. You have plenty of ammo, right? Just hit the button. You're, you're just not healing anybody. I, and, like, maybe you, like, kind of froze up or whatever, but, like, obviously there's no way for you to win the fight now. So, going on to the next point. You come forward. Your Risa's purple. So, once again, you're going to see someone is going to die right in front of you. Right? See... Moira eats that first fire strike. She's missing 100 health right now. You should be healing the Moira. Your Reese is fine because she's fortified, so she's not going to die very quickly. She takes half damage. You got to keep healing the Moira. You don't, and then your Moira dies. 
I don't really know who you're blaming here. I mean, like, she just, yeah, she gets spammed down dies. It happens. Like, you you need to be healing your mortar here. I would also note on the top of your screen, you can see Farrah's critical health in the background. She only has 75 health, and you really need to give her one dart. One dart here on the Farrah on the top left would be huge to keeping her alive. Your Reese is totally fine, and now your Farrah's out of view, and now you're not able to heal her, and now your Farrah dies. Right? Again, these mistakes are not on your team. They're on you. You're just not keeping people alive. Right now, your Orisa is super low, so she's going to be purple right now. I would have already started reloading. At this moment in time, when she got purpled, I would have just reloaded. Right now, I would just reload, because you're at 5 ammo, and you can't heal her for the next few seconds anyway, so I would reload and get ready for the next you know, phase of the fight, basically. But you don't reload, now you only have 2 ammo, 1 ammo, and you don't heal the Orisa as soon as she becomes available. You can see her health. This is not just replay, right? You can see that the Orisa is critical health in-game. You knew that she was critical health right now. You should have been getting ready to heal her as soon as she goes to the right side of this block. Because there's no way your damage to the Ryan is going to kill him right now, right? With the with the Anna and the Kirikou here, it's impossible, mathematically impossible to kill him. So your goal here should be to keep the Orisa alive, not to kill the Ryan. And you should also be throwing grenade here to hit both your Risa and the Reinhardt, which would be a huge fight swinging play. But none of these things you do, right? You don't use grenade, you don't heal your Risa, right? And you didn't reload on time. And now you're trying to peek four people with a shield, which is obviously not going to work. Ryan charges in, so you hear the charge right now. So again, I would just step back from the corner and then sleep him right away as soon as he turns the corner. Instead, you don't try to sleep, kills your soldier. Same thing over and over again, right? Like, you're just not doing the things. Like, you have the tools to save your team. And even if we're not saying, like, oh, you need to make every single play in the game. You're not making any plays in the game. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not like you're saying, oh, I, you know, you make 50 or 60% of the plays in the game. Like, you're literally, at this point, like, 0 for 5 on team fights of, like, things that you could have done something differently to swing the fight. But you're not doing any of them. You know, and like when you're like looking for, hey, how do I, how do I impact games? Like you impact games by saving teammates, right? Disabling enemies, things like that. So Moira makes a big mistake. I think she like fades into this. Yeah, she fades into this, right? Again, this Moira is clearly not very good, right? This is like bronze five level play, but like it happens. Like you, you can't do anything about your teammates, so you might as well help them out. If you heal the Moira here, because you can out heal Ryan, right? For the record, you can out heal Ryan. More uh, Anna heals for like, ninety two health a second which is more damage than Ryan can do, excluding Fire Strike, right? And that's not including Leech or anything else from, from Moira. So you can out-heal a Ryan solo. So you bail right now. All right, coming back here. Uh, your first can die. There's not anything really about, you can really do about that because the Ryan's on you. Note about Grenade is make sure to hit yourself with a Grenade. So you see how you threw it too far forwards? Just throw it between the two of you. Grenade splash is pretty forgiving, but you should make 100% sure to that, that both of you eat that grenade because you're super low right now. Uh, lucky to dodge the shatter, but we'll take it. Great sleep, I'm good. Right, good sleep. You go in here. I like the way you didn't go back to spawn, which I think is a good idea because again, it's you know you want to be able to come out here and help your help your team. I probably would have come out this door versus the opposite door, because I'm so low, I actually don't want to attract any attention, so I want to be in the back of the pack. But you just said go left, which I don't think is like that bad. I don't I wouldn't consider this a mistake. I would consider this suboptimal, but I don't consider this like a mistake in the way that some of the other things have been mistakes. Your soldier's gonna die after popping ulti here. There's not a lot you could have done about this. Alright, so Ryan's gonna die, then she's gonna walk out. She pops ulti and just instantly dies here basically. If you'd been on her side, you could have saved her. I think that's pretty nitpicky to say that to say that you should have, like it's a mistake, but just noting that you could have saved her if you went right side. So you're going to pop nano here. I think this is not a great nano. I would not expect this to work. Um, weirdly enough, nanoing your, your Moira would actually be a super good play here. I think nanoing Moira here would have been a better play than Orisa, assuming she didn't die before the nano reached her, which she wouldn't have. But also, you really need to heal your Moira right now. The moment that I come out here, you can see that she's She's blinking right now. I think she's been magnetic. Yeah, she's been magnetic. So you should have been healing the Mora right now. So you are very consistently not saving or healing your other support at all. Like, we've seen that trend, fight after fight after fight. Like, you literally do not heal your other support ever. <laughs> I think, like, throughout the entire game, I think you gave him, like, one pack at the beginning of the game, and that's it. And that's a big reason why that support is dying all the time, because you're just not helping her. All right, so coming out here. Um, yeah, you're backing up, right? Again, you should kind of already be thinking about what the right place to be playing is. I don't want to be playing this far up to the corner, right? 
because what if the ride just comes after me? Like, then I'm forced to rotate. I would just play, like, back here, right? Back here, back here, something like that. You got some options. I have to think about, like, New Gibraltar, like, where I would play. You could even rotate the high ground when you had the chance, right? And, for example, if you want to play safe, you could play, like, this tucked-in corner, which is, like, impossible for anyone to ever deal with you, all right? You could have played this doorway if you want to be able to also apply pressure, but it's dangerous of Hanzo. A um, lot of options that are not very close to the Rhine. So, yep, Ren's there. It's not a great ulti, unfortunate, but it's okay. Right? Your fair is low. Heal your Arisa, okay. Your fair is still low. You need to prioritize the fair right now. Your Arisa's in the back line and safe, and she's a tank. You don't have to worry about her dying. Your fair, you 100% need to heal. You're not healing the fair, still not healing the fair, and the fair dies. So, again, watching it from the fair's perspective. So, fair is here, right? Attacks, right? And she's out of position, but like. She, you know, like, see how long it is until she gets healed, right? Okay, so she gets damaged right now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Like, there's so much time here for you to heal the Pharah. <laughs> it's so much time. Like, this is the kind of stuff where you're like, hey, look, how do I get better? Literally, just, like, your teammates can't do it. You're like, oh, I complain with teammates. Your teammates can't do anything if they're dead. You know, like your number one goal should be like, how do I prevent my teammates from dying? And you're like, oh, they do stupid things. You do stupid things too. <laughs> Everyone does stupid things. It's fine. Like mistakes happen. You just need to play around it, right? Like you, you totally could have saved the fair here. Oh, missing a grenade there is big. If you land that grenade, that might be fight winning. But I think it was a good timing for a grenade. So you notice that you're damaging now instead of healing. But like again, the damage you do right now is irrelevant. There's no way to kill the Ryan in this situation. Like with double supports, it's impossible to kill the Ryan. You just need to keep your your Arisa up. All right, Eurisa's super low. Because Eurisa's super low, she like can't apply as much pressure. Now she's purple, but the problem is she's missing 200 healthier that you should have given to her. She should be at full health in purple right now, not two-thirds health in purple. Ryan's going to charge in again. You really need to be looking for sleep. You're slow on the sleep because of high noon. You also could have slept the high noon right now. That actually would have been the biggest play. Right? High noon takes over like two seconds to kill you from 200 health. So right now, just high noon and then dock just in case. Right? You high noon him, you sleep him, great. And then you go back to, to doing whatever else you were, it is you were going to do. But definitely uh, not not very good. High noon kills two here. Kills your Reese and your Reaper. Yeah, and now the fight's over, right? Because now it's five on three. What are you going to do? You know? Like, this is what I mean is by this point in time, the fight is already over because you didn't do the right things up until that point. Right? Your Reese is too, lower than she should be. Right? Number one. Number two, you could have slept high noon. You know, number three, you could be just be in a different position that gives you much better options. All right, so obviously from here you're gonna you're gonna lose the fight. So I'm gonna stop stop the game. Offense doesn't matter. Like your your you slash your whole team is like not even trying to win. So it's not there's no point like watching it. So in summary, what could you have done better? Like everything, you know, like, which is pretty normal, right? If this is a you know, silver level game, everybody has things they can improve. But the highlight is number two. Do you think that things I can improve on would really change the course of the game? Absolutely. Right? Could you theoretically have done something about the result? Absolutely. 100%. Like, almost every single one of these fights, you could have done something that would have won the fight. <laughs> right? Very, very clear. Like, not even, like, crazy, like, oh, you gotta hit six darts in a row on two different heroes to, like, get two picks. No, like, pretty basic stuff. Like, heal your support or DPS in faster than seven to ten seconds. You know? Like, not rocket science like pretty basic stuff and you'd be surprised that like if your dps get healed they can apply more pressure and damage and then the other team doesn't walk over you right if you're if you sleep the rhine in in like when he charges and everyone just focuses and kills him and what turns into for, goes from you getting rolled because the rhine's in your back line into them getting rolled because they don't have a tank right or using an ultimate at the right point in time instead of just popping ultimate and a three on five after they cap the point like you can't do anything with that in that situation. Like, your ultimates, by and large, did nothing this whole game. And that's also going to really hold you back. But that's not something I'm even going to focus on because I think that's, like, too advanced for your level right now. I would focus on simply straightforward things like keeping an eye on your teammates and keeping them alive. <laughs> like, really that straightforward. Like, there's such long periods where you go seven plus seconds not healing anyone is, is number one, right? Number two is... The sleeps, in particular, are just not coming out at the right times when your team actually needs them. And then we could talk about things like grenades or ultis or, or positioning, but I would not even focus on those things. I would just, two major takeaways. Number one, heal your teammates, right? Very important, heal your teammates. Number two is sleeping the enemy, right? Sleeping the enemy when it's necessary, not like after they're already in your back line, not after they've already charged somebody, not like, oh, after the high, the high noon's already killed two people on your team.
All right, I'm going to stop there. Hopefully this is helpful.